Good afternoon, honoured di dignitaries and uh, honoured guests. First of all, I should like to thank Professor Helbig as president of the Verein für Forderung der Wissenschaft und Forschung for honouring the scientific achievements of my mother by naming this annual award for excellence in research the Regine Capella Adel Lecture. And I should like to most warmly thank Professor Czech for having suggested my mother in the first place and for his kind words in describing her scientific uh, career in Vienna against the background of the time uh, in Vienna. My mother would have been uh, very, very honored. She would have felt truly honored by this tribute uh, from the Medical University of Vienna. And she would have also been absolutely delighted that a very distinguished woman scientist is the first recipient. I regret that my family isn't here today because it's the school holiday week in Britain and they're all skiing in France. <laughs> I, but I think my mother would have approved since my parents were, all, were both very keen skiers going to the Zemmering or the Racks as often as they could on a Sunday, and my mother fearlessly hurtling down narrow paths in the wood, sometimes landing upside down with her ski sticking up in the snow, as my father's photographs show. Altogether, she was a very courageous lady. After the Anschluss, uh, when the Gestapo came to Jewish homes one day to confiscate typewriters, uh, my mother hotly denied that she possessed one. Nobody was going to take away her precious typewriter, which she needed for writing up her scientific papers, of course. And on another occasion, going home from the synagogue on Yom Kippur in 1938, she was taken by the Gestapo to wash the floor of their office. And uh, she did a very thorough job, as she always did. And then she demanded polish to perfect her job, so that when an official slipped and fell on the treacherous surface which she had now produced, she was very quickly dismissed. But she needed all her courage when my father was arrested on Kristallnacht, and he was imprisoned by the Gestapo for four days, and he was brutally mishandled, and uh, he only narrowly escaped being sent to Dachau with all the other unfortunate Jews who had been imprisoned with him, and who knows whether any of them returned. It was my mother's pregnancy test which saved our lives. Professor Crew, the chief of the Department of Animal Genetics at Edinburgh University had established the first and the only, uh, the only diagnosis laboratory in Britain at the time in the 1930s. And he knew of my mother's test. And so he offered her kindly a place in his department in order to continue her research. We arrived in Britain in January 1939 penniless, and with very little English. Uh, my father had uh, French and Latin and Hebrew. My mother had uh, French, and uh, she had uh, Greek and Latin, but no English. However, she immediately worked, uh, started work in a uh, cruise department in Edinburgh, now studying histidine and histamine metabolism in normal and toxemic pregnancy. My father, meanwhile, he studied at Edinburgh University for his British uh, medical degree so as to requalify in Britain. In 1941, my mother was awarded the prestigious degree of Doctor of Science of Edinburgh University. And in 1951, she was appointed lecturer in the Department of Clinical Chemistry, so the counterpart of 
of course, the department it, that she'd worked in in Vienna. And her research now focused also on hista histaminase in pregnancy. In 1955, she was the only woman who was invited as speaker amongst 30 distinguished scientists at the CBA conference on histamine held in honor of Sir Henry Dale's 80th birthday. And there's a photo of her amongst the uh, 29 gentlemen, the only lady there. She was called the histamine queen by her male colleagues in the field, showing the esteem in which she was held by them and, of course, as a play on her name, Regina. Crowning her scientific work, she wrote the book Amine Oxidases and Methods for Their Study, which became the standard reference work in this field for the period up to 1970, when her book was published. My mother, however, accepted that there was, at the time, an academic ceiling uh, which um, was, uh, prevented women in science really going beyond this uh, barrier. So she used her skills as a woman to best advantage. It was always her room where every morning the members of staff gathered for coffee in order to discuss their research work and to relax. It was she who arranged a lovely celebration and farewell gift for any members of staff who were leaving the department. She was an exemplary mentor for the medical students. Her tea parties for the students were legendary. And she helped that, uh, thereby the new students settle in by the fact that they met and questioned the students in the years above them. Many of these students kept in touch with her for many years after graduating. My mother was a fighter. She fought for justice, she fought for her principles, and she fought for her research work. So she often argued and indeed clashed with eminent scientists who had opposing scientific views. She was a passionate teacher, so a very supportive supervisor of her PhD students. And she always helped undergraduates who had worked hard but struggled with their studies. However, she had no patience for the ones who thought that they were far too clever to need to study at all. In general, she didn't suffer fools gladly, saying stupidity is a sin, which I actually thought was very unfair, even as a child. And I told my mother, it's not their fault if they were born that way. <laughs> my parents were very fortunate in being able to successfully rebuild their lives and their respective career in the country which had often the hospitality in their despair and in their greatest need. They enjoyed a fulfilled life with many interests and many friends, new and old, and they shared a blissfully happy marriage. When my mother died in 1991, her obituary in the Daily Telegraph commenced, Dr. Regina Capella Adler, who has died in Edinburgh aged 91, was one of the generation of continental doctors and researchers whose expulsion under the Nazis became Britain's gain. And it ended with, of the many distinctions bestowed upon her, the most poignant was the Golden Doctorate of Vienna University 
1973. Thank you.